My career at The New Yorker started with my interview with the legendary contributor to the magazine, Evie White. He looked down and said, what sort of job did you envision doing, Miss Growth? And I said, anything in publishing uh, would be fine. He said, do you type? And I said, oh, well, I purposely didn't learn how to touch type because I didn't want to be stuck in a typing pool. At which point he looked at me and I deduced that he had some sympathy for that, for that attitude. And he said, and you don't want to be stuck there? And I, I said, I think anything would be more interesting to me than that. And thereby hangs the tale. I was hired as a receptionist, stayed there for the next 21 years. I talk about having been a receptionist to a number of the writers and cartoonists at the magazine. Uh, taking their messages, getting to know their lives, their children, their ups and their downs, watering their plants, wa walking their dogs, sitting their houses in general over 21 years, becoming a, an accepted member of a group that I had uh, very much wanted to be one of. Well, it was a little like being at a party, an awfully good party, and staying too long. When the Newspaper Guild reps looked at my salary record, ah, there it is, $80 a week to start, 163 to finish, they were incensed, and much was said about the way the magazine was exploiting me. However, as I look back on the eight trips to Europe the magazine underwrote, by way of lengthy vacations in the summers, my 12 years of graduate school, 10 years of expensive psychoanalysis with a top Manhattan analyst. If the magazine chose to exploit my passive dependency, they paid handsomely to rid me of it. The coverage of my desk to permit a Thursday, Friday trip up to Poughkeepsie to teach a course at Vassar as well as the many intangibles that came to me in the way of invitations to share the cultural, social, and literary life of the city, and by extension, the wider world, it's not clear to me who is exploiting whom.